Hi, this is Vicky from Rockstars and Royalty. In this tutorial today, I'm going to be showing you how I added the boning and the lace up back to the prom dress that I did the makeover on in episode one of my Rock Traps Rocks. The dress has been dyed, it's been washed, and I've given the bodice a really good press. And now I can show you the construction of the inside of the dress of the bodice. The bodice part's made from two layers. So we've got our outside decorative fabric, and then there's a fabric inside as well. So the lining fabric and the outside fabric, if I can pull them apart. So you've got the two layers, but they've been sewn together as one layer. And then they've been darted and the seams have been done afterwards. A lot of the edges have been left really raw. They're not really finished. I'd say this is probably a homemade job that someone's at home and made this dress for themselves or for their daughter. The halter neck strap, which is falling off on both sides. Again, there's a very raw edge and it's just been stitched to the top of the bodice there. So the first thing I'm going to do is take that off and mark, I'll mark where it joins back on so we know where to put it back later. It's going to be easier to work without it there. Then I'm going to take the zip out and then we're going to start adding boning channels to the inside and then we'll add our boning and eyelets at the back to make it into a lace up back. The fabric at the back's been folded over to make a self facing there. So I'm just going to unpick that facing and then take the zip out. Now we've got the zip out, it's time to bone the bodice. Now, usually I add the boning to the lining layer of anything that I'm adding boning to, but because this has only got a single layer, I'm going to make bone casings on the inside. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make these little strips out of this white cotton fabric. They'll be stitched down to the inside, and then the boning will go into those. I'm using spiral steel boning for strength. It's lovely and flexible. It's, this is what I use in all my king sits. Because this dress goes down way below the waist, if I use plastic boning, rigeline or something like that, it's just gonna buckle and fold when you sit down. Spiral steel, it's more expensive, but it's way more durable, so I think it's worth it. And I've cut my little strip. So what I've done is I've ironed it in half, and then I ironed it underneath to get the width I need. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to sew this piece in and check that the boning is a good fit inside it before I make all the others. I've sewn my boning channel in now and I'm just testing the spiral boning in there and it's a really nice snug fit. It's not too tight, it's not too loose, so I'm happy with that width. So I'm going to go ahead and make the rest of the bone casings now. So you can see how it looks on the outside. So we end up with a line of stitching next to the seam and then another line of stitching on the other side of the casing. So while it's not ideal and I'd prefer to have it on the lining, in this case I think it's the neatest option. To work out the width that you need to make your bone casings, measure the width of your boning and then allow about one eighth of an inch either side. The finished width of my bone casing for about five eighths of an inch. To make them, what I'm doing, pressing a fold in my cotton, This is one of those pens that disappears after time and they are really handy. If you don't have one, I really suggest you go and buy one, they're really great. You just need to test them on whatever fabric you're using and make sure they do disappear. Now I've got that marked, I'm just cutting along where I marked the extra quarter of an inch to turn under. So I'm going to fold it to that mark and as I fold it, I'm going to press it. There's our finished bone casing ready to sew in. I'm just going to repeat this process now until I've made as many as I need. Now we're going to use the same method to make the bone casings for the lace up back. I've measured my two bits of straight steel boning which are going to go either side of my eyelids. 
So I've measured the width I need for both of those and the eyelet and again left about one eighth of an inch either side to stitch it in. So cut two of these and they're going to go the full length of the opening that you've just taken the zip out of. Now it's time to sew in the bone casings. What I've done, I've folded under the end and I'm just going to sew it up, lining it up with the seam. Uh, this seam stops because it's just a dart so I'm just going to continue it up and finish this side just next to the point at the top of the bust there. We get to the top and we're just going to cut it off, stitch along the bottom and then up the other side. I like to stitch from bottom to top on both sides rather than going down and around and back up the other side. I find it keeps it nice and square. Sometimes if you do them in opposite directions it can pull out of shape sideways a little bit. So this keeps it really nice and flat. So I'm going to go ahead and finish all the um, bone casings now and then I'll show you how to do the centre back. I'm going to start putting in the strips that we've made for the boning and the eyelets for the lace up back. So pretty much the same process. I'm going to line it up with the edge of where we unpick the zip. Move it in a tiny bit from the edge just so we don't see it and stitch all the way down. Just make sure you're not catching any of the chew as you do this and we're going to stop level with where the bottom of the zip opening was. Cut it off just a touch longer again and turn it up you see that's just finishing where the bottom of the zip finished. Now I'm going to repeat that and sew in a line of stitching for boning, a line of stitching for the eyelets and then another line of stitching for the boning. So I use this little guide that's attached to my sewing machine where you can just measure and mark it with the little pen we were using before. And I do this, for this width of boning, I do three eighths of an inch. I'm gonna repeat that now with two more lines of stitching. Now at the bottom, I'm just gonna stitch across so our boning doesn't fall out the bottom when we slide it in. I'm going to repeat the same process on the other side now. So our bone casings are all sewn in. I've got one down the bust seam, the side seam, the side back seam, and then at the centre back we've got the wide one with two channels for our steel boning to go into and one in the middle for the eyelets to go through. The bust side and side back seam stop at the, um, where the bodice joins the skirt. The one at the back, the lace up back, goes all the way down to where the bottom of the zip opening was. And you can see I've stitched through all the layers and that's how it all looks on the outside. So now it's time to start putting the boning in. I'm using spiral steel boning for the front, side front and side back. And then down the centre back either side of the eyelets, I'm using a straight steel boning. I bought this from a new supplier this time and it's a little flimsier than I like so I'm actually going to do a double layer on it just to make it a little bit stronger. So you can use plastic boning for this if you want to. I'm using, as I've said, I'm using this spiral steel boning. Now when you cut spiral steel boning, it leaves really sharp ends. So you can get these little metal end caps that you slot on and then crimp in place with your pliers. You just slide on the end after you've cut the boning. I find that they can be a little chunky and can show through on the outside of your garment. So I generally tip my boning with electrical tape. This stops all these sharp bits poking through, it stops the sharp bits then busting through your fabric and poking into you as well. The other bonus for electrical tape is it's really flat once it's on there so it stops any lumps and bumps showing through. To put your boning in, I've tipped one end with my white electrical tape there. We're literally just going to slide it in to the boning channel that we've sewn all the way to the bottom and I hold it 
with my thumbnail at the length that we want. And I use these side cutters. Clip. Twice like that and it cuts it into a nice edge. in so it's really tight into that boning channel. I'm just going to pop a little pin to hold it in place and then once I've got all the boning in I'll stitch it just across where that pin is to hold it in place. I'm going to go ahead and do them all and then we'll sew them into place. All my spiral boning's in, so now I'm going to bone either side of where the eyelets are going to go along the backs with this straight steel boning. So this is a little bit more flexible than I'd like, so I'm going to use a double layer. So for this, I mark the length that I need. I'll just mark it with my little pen. Now that's marked, I'm going to use a hacksaw cut the lengths that I need. My straight steel bonings are all cut and I've taken them together and they're ready to pop into our boning channels now. There's a slight curve to it so I tend to do with that curve curving inwards so it sits nicely against your body. If it goes that way it's going to maybe curve out a little bit at the top and the bottom. So even though I've used steel front and back and spiral steel boning you can use plastic boning for this if you want to. Be aware that it's not quite as strong and long lasting as steel. And just push it in nice and tight and pop a pin at the top. Using the straight steel there is just going to keep our back really parallel when we pull the lace in tight. Okay, now I've got all the boning in, I'm going to go and stitch it all in place and then sew the facings back down and then it'll be time to put our eyelets in. I've machine stitched along the top of each piece of boning to hold it into place. And now I've pinned back the facings and I've pinned back the alternate feature cuff. This time, remember it was got that really raw edge there. I've lined that up underneath and got a much neater finish. I'm just gonna hand sew everything into place. It's time to put my eyelets in next. I've marked out on the gap we left between the two rows of steel boning at the back. I've marked out exactly where my eyelets are going to go. Like these are one inches apart and then I've measured halfway between and put another line so I've got an exact point where to make my hole. I'm using these two piece grommets. So you put the outside bit through from the outside inside bit on the inside and then you hammer it closed using this tool. You can buy these from any good corset making supplies website. If you don't want to do eyelets or grommets, this part where we join this in here, you can attach little loops in at that point and then you can use the loops to lace it up. You can use a really thin ribbon or you can make some little rouleau loops from your own fabrics. If you're changing it from a zip to a lace up back and you're going to use loops, make sure there's a wide enough gap. So if you've got a garment on with a zip and it fits you, you're going to need to cut quite a bit off to make a V shape for when it laces up. Here's how I put my grommets in. So I take my awl, I poke it through where I've marked. Oh, this fabric is really light, I can feel it. I need a little hole. I then take this tool and I use this to stretch the hole open. So now I've stretched the hole open with this tool. You don't want to punch a hole that's the size that you need it because it's just going to fray out from underneath your higher level from it. This way you're stretching it open and it kind of binds all these fibers together at the edge of the hole and it stops it fraying. So now I've got this through, what I do is I put the outside part over the end 
and I use the tool to force that back through the hole. You then take your closing tool, put the back on it, put that through the outside, put the other end of the tool on, and hammer it closed and it folds the edge of the outside over the inside and you've got a lovely, neat, strong grommet that shouldn't fray out from your fabric. I'm going to go and finish all the rest of these over on the floor because my desk is a little bit bouncy and my floor's solid concrete so they're hammering much better down there. My eyelets are all in on both sides now. The last job we need to do is to make a panel that will sit in under the lacing. This stops any back squish coming through between the ribbons because that's not a good look. And also, if it's squishing you like that and you're wearing it for a while, it can dig in and be a bit uncomfortable. So I'm going to find some ivory satin and I'm going to make a triangular panel that sits in underneath. I just tried it on and on me the gap at the top here is five and a half inches and the gap here is two inches. So I'm going to make it that size plus an inch either side so it sits neatly in underneath all the way down to the bottom here. Here's how I make my panel to go behind the lacing. I've got two layers of the white cotton that we use to make the boning casings from. I've drawn it into a triangle that's the right width for the gap I've got on the dress plus an inch either side at the top and it's enough length to hide everything once it's in. So to bone it I cut just plastic boning this time rather than steel and I cut pieces that go horizontally and vertically and sew them in to make a kind of ladder and this keeps it nice and smooth when it's sat in under your lacing. So first of all, I'm just going to sew the boning onto the two layers of the cotton. Then I've got two pieces of ivory satin, which I'll use as my outside and lining fabrics after I've sewn the boning in. My boning's all sewn in and I've pinned the two layers of cotton with the boning sewn to on top of my two layers of satin which are face to face, so right sides together. And at the ends I've just folded the satin back and pinned it back on itself and I'm going to stitch around the edge and then we'll turn it in the right way and I'll stitch around the edge to close up that gap. I've stitched all around the edge, I've trimmed my corners and now I'm going to turn it in the right way. panel's finished. I've just top stitched all the way around the edge. You can see we've got a nice firm triangle. Um, I'm just going to sew it in so it sits in underneath our lace up back. All I do to sew it in is just attach it with a few stitches just past the eyelets on that side. So I'll sew it probably from there to there and then it's got some movement so you can move it to sit exactly where it needs to once it's laced up line it up just inside the eyelets and just above the top one. Now all the boning's in, the eyelets are in and our panel's in, it's time to put the ribbon in and lace it up. I'm going to show you how to lace it up with ribbon in the style of a Victorian corset where you're left with the loops of the waist to tie. Here's how to lace it up. I'm using eight meters of double face satin ribbon. Start by taking the ends of your ribbon and come from the inside to the outside of the top eyelet and pull your ends even. Next you're going to alternate taking your ends and bringing them from the inside to the outside on the next eyelet down. We'll do this until we reach the waist. So if I 
identify your waist. So you can see I've reached the narrowest point here. So this is going to be where I do my waist loops. So for these ones, you come out the hole, you take the end of that same piece of ribbon and go back in from outside to inside on the same side. If you pull it tight, you'll see you get this little line here and then bring it from the inside to the outside on the other side, put two eyelets down. Then we'll do the same on the other side. So take the end and on the same side, you go back in from the outside to the inside to create that. And then you come back inside to outside and below there. So now we'll start doing exactly like we did at the top and going all ten ribbon ends inside to outside until we reach the last eyelet. Okay, and then for the very last pair of eyelets, go to the other side, but instead of going inside to outside, we're going to do the opposite. We're going to go outside to inside. So we end up with our ends on the inside of the dress. Just one side. The second side. So it forms that cross at the bottom. And what you do is you get your lengths of ribbon knot the ends together trim off these little ends close to the knot left with a nice neat knot and then we're going to start pulling all the excess back through so if we pull that first pair, all this excess is going to come back up and that little knot is going to be hidden neatly on the inside there so we won't even see it. So now start pulling all this excess up back upwards and you see how nice and neat that is at the bottom there. So all your excess from the bottom comes back up to the waist and we're going to pull it through to those two little loops we left at the waist. As you're doing this you can straighten your panel so it will sit where you want it to and then pull some from the top so tighten it a little bit at the top and again all of this excess ribbon comes through to these loops at the waist and then we'll tighten the bottom a bit more Again, all the excess, my hands are just gone. All the excess from the bottom comes through to the waist. You end up with that lovely, neat shape there. And just keep doing this until it's the tightness you want. You can do a bit more from the top, a bit more from the bottom. That comes through to there. And when you're happy with how it sits, You tie your two loops at the waist in a nice bow. I try, you end up with um, two bits of ribbon either side in your loops of your bow and a single one in your length there. So I try and leave those shorter than those. Then you know which ones to pull to undo, otherwise, you can end up in a big knot. This method's preferable to doing it to lace to the top or the bottom because it gives you that control to tighten the top half and the bottom half separately. And then you can give it one last good tug at the waist with those loops if you need to pull the waist in. That's why it's perfect for lacing courses.